When I, when you told me that this, and, and it's a book I haven't read, you told me that the book that, the, that originated the film is one of the great uh, Western books. Yeah, it's, it's a novel called The Authentic Death of Henry Jones, and it's based on the uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid myth. So you can see this movie is, uh, is transmuted from Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, which was later made by Sam Peckinpah, which was also made by Arthur Penn as the left-handed gun, and by another director named Stan Dragotti with Michael J. Pollard called Dirty Little Billy. But um, this was the first of these movies. It's, it's really a method Western. You know, in the, in the 50s, they were making classic Westerns and noir Westerns, and this was the method Western. And before I take a few questions, I'd like to just talk about the troubled birth and, and agonizing death of this movie before its rebirth. It was, it was purchased by a producer who first commissioned a treatment from Rod Serling, which he didn't like, so they fired Rod Serling, and they hired Sam Peckinpah, who wrote two drafts of the script, and much of what you see is actually Peckinpah's uh, handiwork, although Marlon Brando said that Peckinpah didn't really contribute much. In fact, it's, it's more Peckinpah than the other three writers. Peckinpah was fired by Stanley Kubrick, who was supposed to direct the movie, and uh, Kubrick bailed on Brando during pre-production went to England and never came back. And after unsuccessfully trying to get um, Ilya Kazan, among others, to direct it, they uh, seems to have gone out. It's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, they uh, acceded to Marlon Brando's wish to make the movie, and. Um, the movie was extremely expensive to shoot. There are stories of waiting for hours for the light to be just right on the Monterey Peninsula. Brando was a narcissistic star, not a pragmatic director. Um, the first cut of the movie was five and a half hours long, and it's still pretty long at two hours and 40 minutes. It came out and... Uh, was a total bomb. Um, and then it uh, drifted off into obscurity uh, and into the public domain. I saw it in the 70s uh, in like a fourth generation 16 millimeter print and I thought it was pretty awful. Um, and then eventually after it fell into the public domain uh, Spielberg, uh, Scorsese called Spielberg and said we got to do something about this because Scorsese had seen it in its original release in VistaVision which brings me to the whole restoration notion. VistaVision was the most complex of all the technologies that Hollywood uh, focused on out of a fear of what television would do to the big screen so they figured that to compete with the small screen, they had to get bigger and wider. And so VistaVision is an extremely widescreen format where the film goes, I guess it goes vertically through the, yeah. through the camera instead of horizontally. And uh, I don't want to get into, go down a technological rabbit hole, but it makes it a bitch to restore. And this was a real labor of love to take the original Paramount negative and give it a 6K restoration with all the color correction and everything else. But it, it's, a, it's a prime example of restoring a film as a way of restoring its reputation because once you see this film as it was meant to be seen, you can see it's an awfully good movie even though it's probably, if we had the other uh, three hours of the movie, you could probably edit it into a better movie, but it's pretty good the way it is. You you have the the, the Peckinpah script, right? And I have the, I have the Peckinpah script, 
and then I actually have the working script of the guy who plays Ben Johnson's sidekick, Sam Gilmore, uh, or Sam Gilman. He plays Harv, the guy who's always eating, whether it's watermelon or a piece of fruit, before they rob the bank. That's his little bit of business. And um, the Peckinpah script is pretty close to what you see on the screen. There were th they brought in a guy named Calder Willingham. He got fired. Brando hired the guy who has the credit, along with Willingham, a guy named Tr Guy Trosper, I think. But uh, it's pretty substantially Peckinpah's reiteration of what was a great novel. But, you know, Brando was a superstar. He got to decide on all kinds of things, like the idea that he wears his gun in his pants instead <laughs> of in a holster. Uh, his pants are already a little crowded at this point because he was <laughs> struggling with, uh, with weight. And uh, the author of, a, uh, of the novel, who was hired by Brando to be on set, wrote in a memoir of the shooting that Brando's father asked him, you know, Brando comes in in the gaucho pants with the gun jammed in there, and he says, well, what do you think of that? You know, for, from an authenticity standpoint, and Nieder says, well, the first time he tries to use that gun, he's gonna hurt himself. <laughs> I mean, he said it a little more graphically than that, but uh, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, the, so, so it was packing, but that one other thing about this movie, and it, even the sound is the sea, you know, it's, it's, it's such a different landscape, and, 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 and it's so rare. Uh, to have something. Was it packing part of I don't know whose idea it was because the novel takes place in uh, New Mexico New or Mexico. Arizona and whoever transposed it to the Monterey Peninsula was a stroke of genius because uh, you know, you're looking at, 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 at lush visuals that have no comparison in any other Western. And, and, and you, you, you rightly described it as a method Western and it's uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, everything is in super close up, and both. I mean, Brando and Malden have you know done a few things together. So uh, there's a, this kind of creepy Oedipal thing going on uh, when he first comes to see Dad Longworth, and he's got that smirk hiding his rage. I mean, it's 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 gorgeous. Yeah, and and uh, do you, do you know anything of this Rod Serling version? No, but. Uh, you know, it was just a treatment, and they got rid of him. There are probably a few other famous names attached to it who fell off along the way. D d do you know if Brando loved the film? or Brando did not like the film, uh, but he uh, disavowed it after he saw the first uh, cut of it. But, you know, he's a fairly unstable and unreliable narrator generally, so... Any question? Wendy. Wendy, yeah. Um, I, I heard Carl Malden talk about the film once, and he said that the way he, um, that Brando didn't have the patience to make the young actor cry because he didn't have the professional experience to bring the tears on. So he humiliated her and insulted her until she was crying on, on camera. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, and, and also uh, he slept with her and he made her miserable and she committed suicide. Oh. Uh, she committed suicide later on. I mean, I don't know if there's a direct link between Brando's treatment and her suicide. Many actresses uh, who don't make it do that, but uh, yeah, Brando is not a nice person, so. Right. Yes, April. No, I, I, my guess is that that's Peckinpah because that's that that's really not uh, so much in the book. Although in the book, the the Mexicans are accepting of the presence of these bad guys in them because the Mexicans are so oppressed by the good guys that they're they're okay with the bad guys. The bad guys treat them better than the good guys. So you know, there's there's that. I was also thinking. I was thinking about this. Th 
as well. And I was thinking, wouldn't also be part part of it? You know, Brando had some liberal poli politics, and, yeah, and so yeah. the the idea of having, uh, for example, not subtitle. You know, the the the, the, the Spa you know the Mexican speaking in Spanish is quite unusual, and you know to have the Chinese. You know, the, the, you you see elements of what could probably also be his politics. Yeah, and in, in fact, the I mean, it's it's amazing the the level of detail in the art direction that when he's he when Dad Longworth uh, rides in for the last scene, there's a there's a Chinese person, you know, cutting onions in the corner or potatoes or whatever he's cutting. I mean, that's a great little detail of the daily life of uh, of a town. How much do you think the visual? I think it was Charles Lang the photographer, yes, you yes. know, was, who did uh, Sabrina. He, he worked with Billy Wilder, and then he did How the West was ever won, you know, right, was won. Right. Uh, would you, how much do you think is Charles Lang and how much is Brando the video? Well, the, the I think a lot of it is Charles Lang because he, he knew how to f shoot in VistaVision. This was Paramount's last VistaVision picture, so he'd had a certain amount of practice up until that point. I mean, this, the the framing of the visuals is, is, is great, you know, with the way he uses the buildings to give you... Uh, you know, horizontal and vertical lines is, is fantastic. Yes, sir. And that's um, when they're being chased and caught. That's the Grisby point, isn't it? Uh, I think so, yeah. And, and, but my question is, did they wait for the wind? They didn't make the wind. No, that, that was one of the reasons the picture was so expensive. They had to wait around for Mother Nature to uh, to do its thing. Yeah, which is very method, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes. Part of it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Sure, I, I imagine you're familiar with the contemporary reviews of Feather the Bomb, but do you think that um, did the critics dislike it, or do you think maybe it has something to do with the length that made it? I mean, it's a solid film. It's a solid. It's a solid film. But it was long, and it was also coming at the tail end of the classic western period. You know, when they started to make, when they had the idea to make it in the mid '50s. Westerns were much more dominant, uh, you know, on television. And by the time it came out, I mean, if you think about it, Ride the High Country, the first of the revisionist Westerns kind of comes a couple years after that. And uh, the only Westerns that, that, that resonated were revisionist Westerns after that, you know. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, recall specifically the reviews, but it was, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a method Western, so there's an appeal to people who like Brando. And, but it, 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 it was weird as a Western back then. Now, having had uh, 60 years of revisionist Westerns under our belt, we can watch that and dig it. But in 1961, it would have been a little weird. Yeah, because it had enough of the elements of a classic Western that you're going to go see Marlon Brando in a Western and, you know, the story is, you know, still a, 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 tip, a typical Western, but all this stuff, you know, the good Mexicans and, you know, how does this guy switch sides and everything. I mean, it was, it was neither fish nor fowl at the yeah, time. I, I think, you know, if you think of the, uh, I don't know if the Kazan, you know, fans of Kazan would would, would love this. It would probably feel self-indulgent. And, and they, yeah. it, it's, it's it, I, I look for some reviews to see, you know, just, just, to, just to find out. And I didn't dig particularly deep, but I didn't find anything very interesting written uh, right. about this. So I guess it was not noticed much or, or uh, and, I, and I think it, that, some American critics, especially of that, you know, of that era, would f see this as a, as a like a vanity project. You know, there there, there is a, a like an ego thing, and it, it was not particularly appreciated in general. In general, yeah, and I think the knives were out for Brando generally by then. You know, this was the beginning of his decline until his resurrection in The Godfather and Last Tango. So I mean the other great thing I'm sorry the other great thing about this movie is the character actors in it. You've got everybody. You've got Elisha B. Cook as the bank teller. You got Ben Johnson uh, as, Slim as Bob. Slim Pickens, who then would would work with Stanley Kubrick in um, Doctor Strangelove and ride the bomb in. Um, and uh, who 
was the other one that was in there? Is Johnson Pickett? Oh, Timothy Carey, the guy that he shoots in the bar, who is also in the Stanley Kubrick movie in The Killing. He's the security guard who who harasses the uh, African American guy, who's part of the group that they're robbing. The and then he's also in Killing of a Chinese Bookie, and he's like the master of the controlled snarl. So it's it's a uh, it's a great ensemble cast of, of of Hollywood bit players and 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 Kathy Gerard as the as the wife yes. she's 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 uh, she was in a which but she was in a Bunuel film ten years before I forget which one I, uh, I don't remember yeah it. I don't remember it. when was it restored it was restored about Three five years, years ago no even less probably yeah four or five years ago. It hasn't been much, and I think it was. Well, I mean, if if I'm, I'm sure, for example, my wife and I saw it in France, right after the restoration, the theater was packed. There wasn't an empty seat, you know. And I'm sure if you go back into Cahier du Cinéma or Positif or any of the French magazines, you'll find very long and involved discussions of it. But there wasn't much on the American release. I think um, they they after they, it, it was the restoration premiere in Cannes, and then you know it, it we went around a little bit, and so I'm sure it opened in in, in theaters here. But there was nothing written much that that was of, of particular. And Criterion, you know, eventually put it out. But even their essay is not mm, particularly stimulating. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think that, right. Yeah, I think what you're seeing is uh, a, a color committee consisting of Scorsese and Spielberg, and Spielberg calling each other, yeah. During the color correction process, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an interesting collaboration uh, that, 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 that they entertain. Um, we have time for one more. The old title takes off, John. Is that, is, is there a reason for that? I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
happened in and around Monument Valley. This was his notion. This was something that was visually strong to make the West, but that wasn't real in the sense that nothing really happened there except they shot John Ford movies there. And I mean, I don't know how much of, of, of this kind of stuff actually went on in Monterey, but it's a much more natural setting for uh, a Western, I think. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean the the the, s the opening scene with the you know with the girl with the ring when he's pulling the ring out. You know, <laughs> sorry, sorry. You know, I have to get it. <laughs> I think, <laughs> unfortunately, we have to um, yeah, we have to finish because we have another screening. But Bob, thank you so much uh, again for 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 coming and doing this, and, and thank you for seeing the film.